welcome to the channel in this video we're going to be going over a basic setup to start out with tank tanking now this setup can be ran on any tank whether it's a sorcerer a knife blade templar necro whatever you can use these armor sets on any build so this is just a basic setup but we're using a dk for reference just because dk's are the number one tank so let's go ahead and jump into the stats I have my max magic is 20k, my max health is 38.7, my max stamina is 21.1, my magic recovery is 1.4. You definitely want more magic recovery than anything else because while you're blocking, your stamina will not recharge. Now, that is the case when you're on your back bar because we do run an ice staff back bar. Uh, your stamina recovery will kind of kick in then, so it could make a difference then, but you're not really doing much with stamina recovery outside of taunting and blocking. So, uh, plus our recovery from stam will be dealt with by shards and orbs, so it's not a big deal. So you want your magic recovery the highest. So, now my resistance is unbuffed is 28.5. My physical resistance is 26.6. Uh, I am a Nord, so keep that in mind. Your point, I get that from that racial passive, I get an extra 4k resistances just on my stats alone because of that. So you may have to make some adjustments. So, Magicka, I have 18 points into Max Magicka, or I have 18 points into Magicka. I have 26 into health and 20 into stamina. Again, this, I am a Nord, so it's going to be based off of what you have, you know, based off your racial passive. The boon that we're running is Atro. I highly recommend running this because it gives you more magic recovery. And food we're running is basic by staff food, uh, which gives you a, a ton of stats. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at that. Uh, it gives you 4.4k max health and 4.1k max stamina and max magicka. If you wanted to, you can run the crown fortified mill. There are times where I myself are running this, especially through normals if I'm even using food through normals. It's just, it varies. And then of course for pods we're using tri potions. So, champion points. We have 22 warlord, 14 sprinter. Now, you can put some into bashing to help lower the cost for bashing, but I haven't really needed to. So, it's up to you if you wanted to. Um, we have 75 arcanus, 75 tenacity, 28 tumbling, and 56 shadow ward 75 bless it just to increase our healing these points don't really matter as much same thing with these um, 34 ironclad 22 spell shield 64 hardy 64 elemental defender 27 quick, rec quick recovery 18 bastion and 41 heavy armor focus so if you're not a Nord with that extra, you might want to pull some points out of quick recovery and drop Bastion down to 11 and drop some more points into Spell Shield uh, and your physical increase if you wanted to. Or drop this down to I think 28, I would say, and add a little extra points there. But you know, just mess around with your CP points to your, your, to your liking. Got a new notification here. So, sets. The first set we're running, the first basic set we're running, is Turox Pact. This is a craftable set. What this does, it gives us spell damage, max health, armor, gives us 1.4k armor, and decreases the weapon enchant cooldown and increases non-oblivion damage enchant potency by 30%. So basically, this has a 30% reduced time and cooldown, plus with the infused chant, where it reduces the weapon enchant effect by 25 uh Increases the weapon enchantment effect by 25% and reduces the weapon enchantment cooldown by 50%. So we're going to run a shield on the front bar here just for a little extra defense. Um, if you wanted to, you can use a uh, uh, the one that lowers the weapon damage, weapon and spell damage of the uh, of the mob. Um, on our shield, we're just running a max health enchant because we're not running two shields anymore, I just stick a max health enchant on this, where I used to run a tri stack glyph on both bars, just to keep that extra stats, there's no point in it now. Uh, and then on back bar we have an ice staff with a crusher enchant infused. So, now we're running Tauros Pact on our sword and board and ice staff, and then we're also running it on our waist, hands, and boots, always max health, 
all sturdy. Now, the monster set we're running is really easy to get. It's Engine Guardian. You get it from Darshay Caravan 2. It's one of the easier ones to get. And this will help you with it'll add health recovery, which isn't a big deal. But when you use an ability, you have a 25% chance to summon a Dwemer Automaton to restore 531 stamina or Magicka or 2.1k health to you every 0.5 seconds for 6 seconds. Now, if you're not a Nord, I highly recommend going Blood Spawn here. Blood Spawn comes from Spindle Clutch 2, and it's going to give you stamina recovery and about another 6k resistances along with uh, ulti regen. But what this is going to do is that being new and starting out, being a, if you are a Nord, this is going to help you maintain resources until you can drop it for something like Lord Warden, or you can go with Sentinel here. When Sentinel comes from Darkshade Cavern 1, and it's going to heal you and restore Magicka and Stamina to you and your allies within 5 meters. Especially a little Dwarven Spider will jump out, it'll be, give you a little green field around you, and as long as you're standing in it, you'll be okay. It's going to restore resources. Where this is random, this is going to give you all of those resources back. It's not quite as much as this one, but it's still... Uh, it works just as good. So either one of these. Lord Warden is one of the bigger sets at the end. The journal in game it gives you armor resistances. And when you take damage, you have 50% chance to summon a shadow orb. 10 seconds. That's just going to increase the physical and spell resistance of you and allies within 8 meters of it by 3k. So this is. Uh, you're going to use this a lot in game. But starting out, Sentinel, Engine Guardian. Uh, I got Blood Spawn over here in a chest I can show you what that is as well um, I believe I had blood spawn over here okay well, either way uh, maybe it's in another chest yeah I don't see it oh my so unprofessional either way earth gore is also nice to have when you get that late game you know it's just a nice little heal for yourself um, but when it comes to monster sets, Bogdan's a good heal if you just need a heal for yourself. Uh, Malibus Scourge as well. This will give you max health and it will heal you as well if you're just having more trouble. This will increase the damage, will reduce the damage, will give you major protection. This is, uh, use this in Chokethorn if you don't want to run a monster set, but you want more magic recovery. You just want to run one piece Shadow Ren, one piece Chokethorn, and it gives you magic recovery. And then the rock ends as well gives you max health when you take damage from a nearby enemy. So I'm gonna pull uh, basically the disease bile. It puts minor maim on the target, but we get minor maim from heroic slash, so we don't really necessarily run this as much. And if Icosa is a good set as well to have when you bash an enemy, you taunt it, you frighten them with an effing how lowering their weapon and spell damage by 19% for five seconds. If that can occur once every 15 seconds, it's a good little set to have as well. So, there's a lot of tanking sets that you can run. Just go with what you can get starting out. Blood Spawn, Spindle Clutch 2, Engine Guardian, Dark Shades Caverns 2, Sentinel, Dark Shades Caverns 1, and you can pretty much use those to get either one of those three to get the rest of your sets. So, now, you want we're running an infused medium helmet, and we're running... This should be sturdy, but right now we have well fitted. But you do want light and medium with the 511 setup. This has some max health enchant on it as well. But you definitely want sturdy, but well fitted isn't as bad, isn't that bad either. So now the second five piece set that we're running is Ebon. We're running infused chests with a tri-stack glyph, legs, infused with a tri-stack glyph. Now do you not have to have tri-stack glyphs on them? I have them because I do use this in game and I run tri-stack glyphs on all of my ebon pieces so but we're running on the legs the chest and legs infused with tri set at the moment you can just put a max health enchant on it and it'll be just as good and then we're running um three pieces jewelry Jamora collar is a named one that's an arcane you know i wanted that little extra magica so i used the arcane necklace and then i have the two ebon rings that are healthy all with magic recovery so where this comes from, uh, Crypto Hearts, you can get it on one or two. I believe the name necklace comes from, I want to say it comes from uh, the Crypto Hearts 2. 
Uh, or no, it may be Crypto Arts One. I'm not sure off the top of my head to be honest with you. Uh, but this does come from Crypto Arts One. Like I said, Tauros Pact is craftable. And what Evan is going to do is just a nice little support set for the group. It gives you max health, max health, healing taken, and increase your max health by 976 for you and up to 11 other group members within 28 meters of you. When it's fully golded out like this, it's going to give um, 1,000. So that's why I tend to, you tend to run this on the body. And then eventually you'll be able to get to your end game where you're running Alkosh on your back bar and your sword and board and your jewelry. And then Ebon is a really good set to have there. But until you get Alkosh, which comes from all the cars, you're going to Ebon and Taros Pact is the best way to go. Now, this is your basic setup for most tanks. You can run this on any tank and do absolutely any content, any four-man content, any trial for the most part. Um, now, gear on our front bar, or not gear, but skills, we're running Pierce Armor. Uh, we're not really so much worried about the damage. It's more so the fact that we're taunting, we're making the enemy taunt us. We're taunting the enemy to attack us for 15 seconds. We're also applying major fracture and major breach, reducing their physical and spell resistance by 5.2k for 15 seconds. So every 13 seconds, you're going to want to look puncture again, just just to keep it. You know, you don't want to wait until that 15 seconds falls off, because the moment that 15 seconds is up. That mob can easily turn around and go after a DPS or a healer, whatever. So every, I try to retaunt every 13 seconds. Heroic Slash, uh, we're basically using this to afflict Minor Main, reducing our damage done by 15% for 12 seconds. And we gain Minor Heroism, granting you one ultimate every 1.5 seconds for 12 seconds. This is our shield, Igneous Shield. Call the Earth to your defense, granting a damage shield for nearby allies that absorb 3k damage. Your own shield absorbs 7.5k damage. This portion of this ability scales off your max health. You also gain major mending, increasing your healing done by 25% for 3 seconds. Then we have Green Blood. Draw on your Draconic Blood to heal for 37% of your missing health. You also gain major fortitude, major endurance, minor vitality, increasing your health recovery and stamina recovery by 20% and healing receive by 8% for 23 seconds. So. Now, pretty much the combination there is you're getting low on HP. You know, you're probably already going to have this activate because you're going to want to have this activate going into battle because you would buff up and go in. You're going to want an Igneous Shield, Green's Blood. And you're pretty much going to be back to full health. And then, I mean, there's Engine Guardian proccing. And it looks like it is restoring health or stamina. I'm not sure which. It was not matched good that time around. So. And this one here, uh, Defensive Stance, uh, bolster your defense, gain you a damage shield that absorbs up to 10.9k damage for 6 seconds. The portion of the ability scales off your max health. You reflect the next harmful direct damage projectile cast at you. This effect can occur once per cast. While you have a shield equipped, the amount of damage you can block is increased by 10%, and the cost of blocking is reduced by 10%. That's pretty much why we have it here. It's just for that final part, while you have a shield equipped. And then this, Shield Discipline, reinforce your shield, allowing you to automatically block all attacks at no cost for 8 seconds. Your one-hand shield abilities cost nothing while this effect persists. This is pretty much just here, if the case, you know, we need that quick heal, quick ultimate, or stamina, or magic, or whatever, because we're kind of out. Or this our team is wiping, our healer can't necessarily hit res for whatever reason. You just hit it, and you can get a res, and it's going to block 8 attacks for you. You know, so this is... Just a quick little ultimate, 135 ultimate. It's going to give us our resources back. It's going to heal us if need be. And it's going to allow us to give us some time to res a fallen ally. Now, back bar, running in a rage. It's a ranged taunt. It knights the fire to hate in the enemy's heart, dealing 1.7k magic damage and taunting them to attack you for 15 seconds. A ranged ally targeting the taunt enemy can activate the radiant synergy, dealing 3.3k magic damage to them over three seconds and then additional 3.3 .3 magic damage to them and other nearby enemies so this is basically if you're over here and you're taunting these enemies and something runs up or runs off you just hit enter fire and you can taunt it from way back there it looks like that one's restoring magic at that time around or no it's stamina that time around uh, also while we're running an ice staff as well if they're far away you can just heavy attack they're taunted. That broken shield up there is the taunt bar. For, is the, the taunt. So that's your timer for the taunt. Just keep an eye on it. 
So that's also why we're running an Ice Staff. Unrelenting Grip. Launch a fiery chain to grasp and pull an enemy to you, dealing 2k flame damage. Grants major expedition, increasing your movement speed by 30% for 40 seconds. If the target cannot be pulled, you restore 100% of the ability's cost as Magicka. This attack cannot be dodged or reflected. So this is basically, you know, you're just going to pull them to you. And if a mob is an execute for whatever reason, you can just keep spamming this. You know, you're never going to run out and you can do some damage. Uh, blue beam, so it's going to restore Magicka for us. So. so this is our pool, more or less. Choking Talents, call four talents from the ground, dealing 2.4k magic damage to enemies near you, and then mobilize them for four seconds. Enemies that are afflicted with minor main reduce their damage down by 15% for 10 seconds. An ally near the talents can activate the immediate synergy, dealing 4.1k magic damage to all enemies held within them. So, the reason why we're running this as well as Heroic Slash is Heroic Slash is for the Minor Maim and the Ulti Regen. Where, when we first come up to mobs, you know, if there's a ton of mobs, you're just going to, this, you're going to hit Talents, and they're all going to get afflicted with Minor Maim. Instead of running around and hitting every single one with Heroic Slash, Talents does it for us. Because Talents is not really going to work on a boss. So we're going to heroic slash is going to apply minor maim there. Talons is going to apply minor maim for the group. Now here comes Ninja Guardian again. Green. That time it's stamina, I believe. So now on our back bar, we have a crusher enchant. Now we want to, we want this up at all times, and so we're going to run wall of elements on our back bar. As long as they stay in this wall of elements, will not fall off. So we want to keep that down. You know, it's going to deal 450 frost damage to enemies in the target area every one second and reduce their movement speed by 40%. Chilled enemies come frozen or immobilized for four seconds. So we're not, you know, it's good that it immobilizes them as well, but this right here is our main immobilization ability. So, but this here is just kind of there to keep Crusher on at all times. Hard armor. Release your inner dragon to gain major resolve. Increase your physical and spell resistance by 5.2k for 20 seconds. You gain a damage shield that absorbs up to 5.2k damage for 6 seconds. The portion of the ability scales off your max health. While active, the armor returns 577 magic damage to any enemy that uses a direct damage attack against you in melee range. So, but as you can see, our resistance is, if we're on our front bar, is 28.5 and 26.6 so when we hit this and buff our resistance is, is 33.8 and 31.9 now spell resistance caps at 33 so we're a little over spell resistance cap there but physical resistance cap we're under it a little bit so it's not that big of a deal if you wanted to you could take away some points here and uh, spell shield you know just drop those a little bit and add those to heavy armor focus to bump up our physical resistance enough to kind of help put us a cap. Um, I just haven't bothered with it because I haven't had any issues with it. So, but once you get to the point where you are running Lord Warden, um, you know you will be way over cap with this activated. So I would recommend taking out all points in your spell shield if you're a Nord. You know, if you're not a Nord, then leave them. But if you're a Nord, I would take them out. So. And then our last ultimate is the ultimate you want to have. Aggressive Warhorn. You send a Warhorn to rally your forces, increasing you and your group's max magic, max stamina by 10% for 30 seconds. You and your allies gain major force, increasing your critical damage done by 15% for 10 seconds. This is an ability where you want to try to activate at the beginning of the fight and an execute range. You want this off. If you're in a trial, it'll be a little bit different. You know, there will be a rotation setup that you'll be following. Uh, so you might not always use this. But in four-man content, you do want to use this when you start the fight and around execute range. I would say pop it around 26, 27%. So this is in PvP. And you basically have to get your assault line to level 4. It's not that it's not complicated. You can really get to assault three just by going in and doing the basic quest by running around, and then do you a couple of battlegrounds with a bunch of other people, uh, or just get you in a get in a zerg in the city and just follow it. 
so it won't take you very long to get this um, maybe at the most an hour if that I mean I think I got aggressive warhorn within 30 minutes if that um, to be honest with you so very easy to get uh, not very complicated don't let PvP scare you that much I understand but when you're in a Zerg just stay close surf follow them uh, you know that's basically you do the main quest you'll get to like three and a half and then you take a keep or two or a few resources you pretty much got your assault your assault and support to level four and you're good to go and no need you can opt you can get out now if you want to get barrier which is a real nice ability to have as well uh, you'll have to stay until six and that could take a few hours if you're not you know if you're having some pushback when it comes to alliance wars if not then it could be done within that hour as well um but it, it could take a few hours if you're not lucky so but aggressive warhorn is the main ultimate you want because as a dk you can always use magma shell for barrier this is basically going to give them a hundred a damage shield equal to 108 percent of their max health for 10 seconds now it is nowhere near on the same level as barrier but it can suffice if you don't want to get barrier but I would highly recommend getting barrier if you can if not it's not a big deal you know just keep shield discipline there uh, for that quick ultimate resource for that quick ultimate if you need to rest somebody or need resources and then aggressive warhorn on your back bar for just about everything else for the main the main one if you need to so that is pretty much set up basic standard starting out tank setup on a DK I hope you enjoy it um, I hope you have fun with it so until next time take care